flat out lies. Yeah. What do you think? If I could ask, what do you think? Uh, where, where do you think David Miscavige's wife is? Oh wow. I think she's up in Lake Arrowhead, locked up. I used to see Mary Sue, Mary Sue Hubbard. After Hubbard died, they had her locked up. Not locked up, but it's sort of like. She was a prisoner in their own church. Do you know what I mean? They had bodyguards with her. We would run into her at the AMC, and she would say hello, and we would talk for a minute, and then she was gone. She never got to say anything. Nobody yeah. ever got to interview her. Nobody ever got to. They, they made sure of it, yeah. that nobody would ever get to Mary Sue Hubbard. And I think it's the same for Miscavige's wife. You know, she's up there. Helps. She thinks she, she's guarding the materials. Mm. And I'm sure they're blowing enough smoke up her ass that she believes it. And that's what happens. They just get you in a room and they say, you're the only one. You know, like David or Kevin or Carl, you're the only one that can do this. Nobody else can. Or they'll go to Carl and go, you know, look, these guys, David and Kevin, forget it. They can't do shit. You're the guy that's going to do it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, whoa, yeah, I guess you're right. So Carl you know, got or they'll me on this go podcast. to you, David, and say, you know, <laughs> come on, Carl, Kevin, please. You know, you know they they don't do anything. You're the guy. We got to have. You're we're counting on you. You know, for we're pushing civil rights, and you're a man that really cares about civil rights. So we want you to be on our board of directors for civil rights. And you're sort of like, well, okay, yeah, I will. You know, and do you see how they get it isolated? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's really creepy. Yeah. And so then people go, well, I am for civil rights. Okay, good. Well, then we need you on the board. So they're going after opinion leaders. They have, what's his face from the nation of Islam is it part of Scientology now? Louis, Louis Farrakhan, Farrakhan. Is it part of Scientology? Jeez. Is this public Louis knowledge? Louis Farrakhan is clear. He's in Scientology what? for years. What? I was around, in, I forget what year, like three or four years ago, he made, he made an announcement to Nation of Islam. He said, all of you will be on course on Tuesday night, or we're going to thank you and say goodbye. And I turned on my webcam, and I said, this is a message to the African-American community. And I said, number one, Scientology doesn't give a shit about you. Hubbard was actually very racist and against black people. Wow. But they want your money. They want your connections, and and they want bodies in the shop. That's it. That's the only reason they're coming after you guys. And what? and by Sunday, that was Tuesday night. By Sunday, my girlfriend called me. She goes, "Turn on the TV. You're not going to believe it." And sure enough, there was another black guy on TV saying, "You know what? Louis Farrakhan has flipped out, and we're going to have a Caucasian lady." It's the only time I've ever been called a Caucasian lady. It was really funny. We're going to have a Caucasian lady on who's an expert, and she's going to tell us about it. And they played my little video. Wow. Wait, so, wow. Okay, but go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. I just wanted to ask, like, uh, in your experience, is there anything, like, just normal people can do to help? Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you're approached by a Scientologist in the street, is there really anything anybody can do to help people get out? Well, what I do, I carry around business cards. I made them up, and they have, like, key websites, like Tony Ortega's site, CNU.net. I have my YouTube site, Tori Magoo 44 and a few other ones that you like. You know, put them on a card. Because th- this came about because we used to pick it, and we'd pass out flyers. Yeah. And I would find people would throw them away, and I thought, I'm kind of the same. I hate flyers. They're big. They're bulky. But a business card, everybody, they'll take it. You know what I mean? And it's a great way to just say, hey, here's some information. And a lot of people that are now in Scientology are younger people because, you know, there's second generation, stuff like that. And you can just hand it to them and say, look, when you've got time, go to the library. Look this stuff up. Because if they're Sea Org, they, they probably don't even have a cell phone or access to it. But they can go to the library. And, and kids have called me, and I've helped them get out. Who, were, who saw my videos, they were in the Sea Org, they saw my videos, and they woke up and got out. Wow. Well, so, okay, so um, I guess one thing before, <laughs> I, I want to get to some of the juicy celebrity stuff that everybody's always wondering about in a moment, okay. but I guess the last thing I want to ask about you and your situation is, uh, you mentioned something about being chased uh, <laughs> chased around the uh, uh, the country. Did you mention that already in detail? Or I was wondering if you could elaborate what that was. I was chased, yeah. When I left, I, A, remember, I didn't think they did fair game. I really didn't think it was true. 
they canceled my van to go to the airport the day I was going to leave. And I called the, the van. I said, where's my van? They said, oh, someone anonymously called and canceled it. That's the first sign I had. If you think of all black and a little pinhole with light coming through it, that was it. I thought, wow, they do do fair game. I get to the, I finally call around every single, what do you know, on a Wednesday, every single, um, every single cab, every single everything was booked. But I finally got a guy. He got me out to the airport. The plane is canceled. And I think to myself, can John Travolta cancel a plane or is this just an accident? I don't know. But Stacy had said, bring a phone. Back then, people didn't have cell phones. We had little emergency phones in 2000 that you had in case you were in an emergency. I said, Stacy, they don't do stuff like that. She said, Tori, we used to run programs like this. Bring the phone. So I put it in my pocket thinking, she's nuts, but I'll bring it. I walk inside LAX. The vice president of the Church of Scientology comes pounding up to me saying, we know exactly where you're going. We know who you're talking to, and you're not going. Wow. And I flip open my phone and I go, Stacy, they're here. The vice president is here. And she says, Tori, I'm going to put you on with Jesse Prince. Do not set down the phone. And Jesse gets on and says, don't set down the phone for anything, not to go to the bathroom, not for anything. We're going to get you on a plane and we're going to get you here. And she followed me the whole way. She's carrying my luggage at one point. I had to get on a little tram. And I said, look, I'm escaping from a cult. Please help me. The guy thinks I'm nuts. You know, he's not going to do anything. She, I, I was just trying to get her to leave me alone. She wouldn't. She follows me. I say to Bob, I can't get rid of her. Well, she was copying down all the information for where I was flying, right? So Bob finally says, you know what, screw it. I'll get your first class ticket. You can go into your own lounge. She won't be able to go in there. You can get on the plane. So I get on the plane. I relax. I think, oh, thank God, I'm done. Now I'm going to Florida. I'll be fine. I, you know, I've been to Florida a million times. They only go till midnight in Clearwater, Florida. The van only goes there. So I think, okay, I'm fine. It, and the plane lands at 145. No problem. We have to stop off in Chicago to switch planes. I think, oh, no problem. I walk out. There's my husband. Tori. Hi, honey. It's me. We got to go on a vacation. Now, he never was in this dark side of shit that I got into. So he, and he was born in Scientology. So his parents got in in 1950. So he, and he doesn't like me talking about him, so I'm not going to say much. But I'm just telling you, he, he was at, in Chicago at the time. He stayed in Scientology, just so you know, from people that are going, well, what happened? He stayed in Scientology. And... He's OT8, which is the top. That's the top of what you can do spiritually. Supposedly it's spiritually. It was a big mess. But anyway, he shows up. He didn't know anything about the dark side. I did, and I knew they were going to take me and lock me up in a cabin, and I had no idea what they were going to do, but it wasn't going to happen to me. And I said, no, it's not going to happen. I'm not going on a vacation with you. I'm going to Clearwater. And he, and he goes, well, then I'm coming with you. And all of a sudden, this mob of people show up. I said, who are these people? And it's, the, oh, it's Osa handing me huge piles of papers saying, you've got to learn about these people. They're really evil. Don't go. Wow. He says, I'm coming with you. I say, no. If I have to call the police, I will. You're not coming with me. Because my view was I was going across a bridge out of Scientology to see if these people I was visiting were, were really – critics or are they really osa in disguise then I, my plan was to come back and get him i didn't know that they would kind of vacuum out his soul while while i was gone and by the time i got back he was gone gone wow. now did you get into scientology because of your husband or through your husband no 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 i met him in scientology oh wow i met him out here um no i got in all by myself remember i hitchhiked right, from right. chicago to to Los Angeles in 1969. Yeah, I just I wasn't sure, you know, how how long you had known or you know him or. No, where, we got the, married the in '74. I met him in 1974. I mean, I met him and we got married. I think I met him in '73. We got married four months later in 1974. Okay. No, um, I must have met him in '74 because we got married in May and we only know each other four months. Yikes! And we went on the newlywed game and we won. Hey. Wow. <laughs> 
wow, well, there's that. Um, maybe Scientology arranged that win, though. I don't know. Um, but but uh, actually, wait. I, I, I quick tangent. Uh, as far as you know, was Chuck Barris uh, an agent of the CIA? <laughs> did did you oh, win? Yeah. Did you win like know. a trip? I don't. <laughs> So okay, so so many questions. Speaking of special agents, but ask Mark Ebner; he'll know. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of special agents, so to speak, I want to veer into our Mission Impossible star and his fabulous life, uh, Tom Cruise. Um, okay, so did you know him or have any inside scoop about him? I have a couple specific questions, but in a broad sense, I'm always fascinated by like what the hell with that guy. Okay, so a couple things. I helped train John Travolta back when he got Welcome Back, Cotter. Mm-hmm. I was a, one of the people that helped train him. So he, I know. Tom Cruise, I never really knew personally. But I will say this about him. When he was jumping on Oprah's couch, one of the things for OT7, when you finish OT7, which is the second to the top level, to get on to OT8, and OT stands for Operating Phaeton, and Phaeton equals a spirit. So it's sort of their big spiritual thing. To get onto the top level, you have to do a huge contribution. Huh. And I'm pretty sure, I, the Oprah thing could have been just him with Katie. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure the Matt Lauer thing where he talked about, you don't know the source of psychiatry, I do, that was his, supposed to be his contribution. He was supposed to wipe out psych, psychiatry. Or at least make a big dent in it, <laughs> which it ended up totally flapping and going against them. But that's what I think. When it wasn't too long after uh, the whole jumping on the couch thing that the the Scientology video was released to the public, where Tom, you know, was, uh, I don't, I don't know the whole <laughs> the cackling. Well, yeah, yeah where he it, it was, yeah, I guess supposed to be shown at one of the Scientology conventions or big meetings, but. Uh, where Tom Cruise is talking about how he no one else can save lives. I, I yeah, know you're how either to save in them. or out. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's but- the thing that got anonymous going. And Mark Ebner can tell you more about how that actual thing got on the internet because it's pretty cool. Uh-huh. But um, that was the that was a video that got anonymous, as far as I understand. Where they went, you know what? You don't own, you don't own the internet, and we're going to take this down. That's it. And they and see, I thought that there's a, a man who had written a book, the un, uh, what is it called? It's a it's a book on Tom Cruise that was like the un, uh, like he didn't write it. Wait, I have it here. It's Tom Cruise, an unauthorized biography by Andrew Morton. Oh, that guy, Andrew Morton good. came to my house to interview me and a bunch of our friends and stuff like that, and it was, it's a pretty cool book, and I thought. I thought when Anonymous showed up, I thought, okay, this is just OSA. They're just trying to distract off of Andrew Morton's book about Tom Cruise. That's what I thought. So I made a post about that, and I got a call in my bed. I'm in my bedroom, and I get this call. This is Anonymous. It scared the shit out of me. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) they had some interesting plans. I won't say any more, but we, we ended up deciding let's just do a picket. And they said, all right, we'll meet you down at the complex, which is Big Blue, and we'll walk around. We'll see if we're going to do it. And we did. We walked around. There, that video is on the internet somewhere, and um, where and they, Blue they videotaped the, me uh, walking around, showing them the different buildings. And at the end, he said, "Okay, we're going to have 500 people here on February 10th." And they did. And Big, they did. And they had 9,000 people around the world picketing the Church of Scientology and exposing their abuses. And Big Blue is, uh, for those who aren't familiar with L.A., uh, that's the, the big Scientology Center on Hollywood Boulevard. Or, I'm sorry, on yes. Sunset, rather. Uh, no, I think it is. Uh, it's on, it's yeah, off Sunset. of uh, it's uh, on, yeah, Sunset. Sunset, yeah. right, Sunset uh, in Vermont. Yeah. yeah, right by L. Ron Hubbard Way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did that happen? I, which I was part of helping get that name, by the way. Yeah, how did that happen? Because uh, it's supposed to be a separation of church and state, no? No, we just went down there and said, "Look, we own the block. We own all the buildings on there. Come on, you know, let's just it's it's one block. Can't we just name it Elron Hubbard Way?" And the guy said, "Yeah, okay." Wow, but wow, there was that's how it happened. There I mean, wasn't we even court, like a... I, I talked to the guy. I said, "Come on, you know, it's like there's nothing else on the block. There's like one apartment building or something. That's it. The rest of it's all owned by Scientology." So and the guy went, "Yeah, okay." Wow. Um. Okay. Now, so. 
Yeah. Let me just say this. Was there an 